4-0 victory over Temple in the American Athletic Conference semifinal. Was this as complete a performance in your eyes as it looked like on the stat sheet? No. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, we scored two goals in the first five minutes and we're, we're on them then, but the rest of the first half was relatively even. Then they got the guy sent off. Um, so we were 10 v 11 the rest of the game. They still created a little bit, but once we got the third and they committed a lot of numbers forward, it was, it was over. You mentioned two goals in the first five minutes, both on set pieces, but your guys were also sort of spending a lot of time in front of their net. How do you account for the fast start? I have no idea. Um, they were prepared. No, we were, it was a good week of training. Uh, it was light, but they were focused. We turned the page quickly from winning the league to trying to get another trophy this weekend and said, um, you know, we're not just playing for fun this weekend. We're playing for results and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to hold another trophy on Sunday morning. Were you and your staff worried at all about the hangover from beating Connecticut last week and winning the regular season title? Yes, 100%. Um, and, and how do you a, compensate for that? As a coach, you're always worried about that because you don't, as much as you say it to the players, they, you know, it's a, it's a good team, they'll be hungry, it's their last opportunity, they have to win to get in the tournament, all, all those things. Um, you're still worried that you can overlook an opponent. Um, and Temple's a good side, and we were, we were pretty concerned about them on the counter, and... Um, the right back's a very good player, so, um, but, yeah, the start was fast. Uh, Emil was ready, he had a really good week, and he's been sharp for, for a couple weeks now, so, you know, for him to get a goal two minutes in is, is a good moment for him. Temple, as you mentioned, goes down a man with 11 minutes left in the first half when they had a player ejected. Um, what adjustments did you guys make, if anything, in terms of how to attack once they were down a man? Yeah, we, we wanted to be patient the whole game because they don't commit a whole lot of numbers forward. So I thought we could keep it against them and, and kind of make them chase side to side until eventually some spots opened up for us to kind of break some lines. But um, once they went down a man, it, it obviously became easier. But, you know, the teams that go down a man kind of, you know, you can play without any reservations at that point because you're down a man. So throw some numbers forward, take on a few more risks, and sometimes that can cause you trouble. So the start of the second half, they went three at the back, and they left McLaughlin alone with the center back, and that's not a good move. Um, two guys for Temple went off with injuries. One of them ended up coming back right. uh, late, but... Um, was it field conditions? Was it just bad luck? And did you say anything to your team? And is there anything you can do to try to protect your guys from slipping? Because both of their guys went down untouched, I think. Yeah, I mean, Eddie kind of turned, you know, changed directions pretty quickly. And I think the guy either slipped or planted funny or whatever. But you, you feel for guys whenever they're injured. But, you know, it's part of the game. I, I don't think the field conditions, it was slippery. You know, I said to the assistants when we started the game, you know, Something's going to happen out of you know a goal is going to come out of somebody slipping tonight because when you get late no you know get in November on this field and they're trying to bring the uh, bring the rye in and it's wet and it rained a lot on Wednesday that it's going to be slippery. Michael Nelson and the defense seven shutouts in a row now. What's what do you see? What's the key to the way they're performing in the, over the last few weeks? Yeah, they're confident. They don't give up a whole lot of chances. You know, and it's not just them. I think. Overall, the two that sat in front of them, the both, both the wing backs, um, I think we do a good job of staying together. And if teams don't have, you know, a really special player or some sort of, you know, a whole lot of creativity or you know, they're not too complex when they're trying to combine and break us down, we're pretty disciplined in the way we defend and kill off chances. Michael made two great saves tonight, so it wasn't like it was completely in hand the whole time. But, um, yeah, they've been in good form, they're confident, they have a good belief and commitment to each other, so I'm really happy with those guys. Now you advance to play Central Florida Sunday afternoon uh, for the conference championship, the second conference championship. Sure. You played them a few weeks ago, you beat them 2-1. to one. What do you take from that game in terms of preparing for Sunday and what kind of matchup do you expect? Yeah, it's a quick turnaround, right? I mean, it's 36 hours in order to play another big game, which is silly, but um, I think they were the, they're the second best team we played all year behind Stanford. Uh, they, if I take myself back to the end of the end of September, beginning of October when we played them, I mean, they, 
they put a number on us for the first 30 minutes, uh, and they, they had us chasing. So we'll have to make a few changes, but they're a good side. And I told the, you know, I said to the other coaches when they came in here, I think Central Florida is the favorite to win the conference tournament. I, I think they're that good, and they're in that good of a run. So uh, we'll be ready. We'll put up a good fight, but I think they're the favorite.